What's up guys, it's Jack Knife TV. So I have a 2023 Kenworth next gen T680 with about 86,000 miles on it right now. It's got Bridgestone drives, Bridgestone steers. Um, and they, like I said, they have about 80,000 miles on it. Now, I'm pretty sure I had one of these tires patched before. I can't remember which one. I don't think it was the tire that's leaking right now. But the problem is when the tire has a leak in it, most likely you take this tire into, I don't know, let's say Loves or TA or whatnot, they're gonna be selling me a tire, all right? They're gonna be like, it's too close to the sidewall. Uh, it's in the outer line of tread. We're not gonna patch it or plug it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it myself. Why? Because I don't feel like paying six to $800 for a drive tire that's practically brand new. So either I got a little screw or a nail in the tire. It's a tiny little puncture. Um, I'm gonna show you here in a second, but we're gonna show you some things you can get off Amazon. Uh, a plug kit and a screw in plug kit uh, that you can use to either just, you know, either permanently, in my case, I'm gonna leave it in, permanently repair the tire or temporary uh, repair a tire to either you can get it replaced or professionally patched on the inside. Now, I've plugged plenty of tires in my day. I've never ever seen a tire blow out because of a plug. Um, you know, it, I, most of this nonsense about plugs and everything was started, well, one, to sell tires, and two, from people improperly plugging tires. And I mean improperly plugging tires, I mean, you know, pieces of cord are hanging out, uh, they're trying to plug the sidewall, things like that. But if you have a puncture that's within the steel band and you're not going in there with like a giant drill bit, drilling the hell out of the van and everything and ripping things apart you can plug a tire it's not going to explode or anything like that so that's what we're going to show here today i'm going to show you the puncture and uh we're going to get started so there's the puncture right there this tiny little puncture it's been leaking now probably for the last week or so and i'm finally tired of it and like i said uh usually most time you go to like loves or ta or something unless it's in this tread pattern right here they're not going to patch it I think the one tire up there, I'm pretty sure it was this tire, I think had a pretty decent sized bolt right here in the tread and uh, Loves ended up patching it. But right here, I know what they're gonna say. They're gonna try to sell me a tire. And with 80,000 miles on these tires and them being anywhere from like, like I said, 600 to $1,000 a tire, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna throw this tire out because all they're gonna do is they're gonna re recondition this tire and sell it. That's what's gonna happen. All right, there. so the first one we're gonna use today because I'm not going to leave this one in, but this is going to be probably more temporary. Let me get a focus on it. It's like a screw-in rubberized hard rubber patch. The top part of it is like a screw. If I can get, get the focus. Top part's like a screw. You just strut it right in here into the hole. And that's what we're going to try out first. And I'm going to get a little bit of a test with a little tiny spray bottle. And we're going to see if it leaks. Then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to do the traditional plug method. But if you're in a bind, I'm pretty sure this would be fine. The only thing is, though, I'd imagine if I left this in here uh, during DOT inspection or whatnot, they might have a problem with it. So that's why we're going to plug it anyway. But if you're in a bind and you just need to plug something real quick to keep air in the tire or maybe a trailer tire or something, I would just go ahead and throw one of these in. You know, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this works. Sorry, it's a uh, a little windy here, I don't know if you can hear me, and uh, my ears are freezing off already, so. All right, so you just put it in, and you just screw it right in that tire. And you heard the air come out a little bit. You screw it all the way in until it's flush. Now, I'd imagine if you leave these in for a long time, Eventually, what'll happen is they'll come out just from just from wear or whatnot. All right, so now we're gonna put a little water on there and we'll test it out. Now I have to get a, a bottle of water with a little anti, I mean, antifreeze, a little alcohol in it, but because <laughs> it's so cold out here, it'll probably freeze. So let's uh, let's try. All it right, out. so as you can see, it's just uh, some alcohol that I keep in the truck. A little bit of, well, at least for the winter time in case this ever happens because it'll freeze and as you can see alcohol doesn't freeze i put a little soap in there so we can see there's no bubbles no leaks or anything and like i said this is real quick and easy you just screw it right in with a regular phillips screwdriver 
and uh yeah there's no leaks or whatnot like i said it's more probably temporary i mean it's up to you if you want you probably leave it in the only thing though is at, over time as the tire wears i have a feeling that they could probably get ripped out all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull that that screw and plug out we're going to do the traditional rubber plug all right pull that screw plug out and do the traditional plug it should just screw right out Yeah, the air come out. Like I said, these are good to keep in a pinch, real quick and easy. You just screw it right in. Right now, like I said, we're going to do the traditional plug method. It's a little cold, so hopefully it works properly. We want these usually more pliable. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remap the hole. Just slowly put it in until you find out where the hole goes in at. twist it you don't want to do is put another hole in the tire you want to go in through the same hole that the puncture went through so we went all the way through the hole as you can hear it's gonna start making making a lot more air noise So what you want to do is you want to unscrew it and pull at the same time. There we go. Alright, so you put it through and it ends open. So you get it about in the middle, you're going to want to pinch it up. What we're going to do is you're going to want to try to force it through here. It's as deep as it's gonna get. Can't add all this stupid crap out. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna cut the excess of flush with the tire. I'm gonna keep an eye on this because I don't know if I was able to get it in all the way, or at least that's what she I'm said. Throw one of those screws on. No, I'm gonna throw a screw on it. It's fine right there, hon. So there we go. That looks good. Let's try to see if it leaks, which I doubt it does. Right. Yeah, plug in a tire at 13 degrees with about a negative 10 or 15 degree wind chill. It's not the easiest thing to do, especially a big truck tire like this. So I'm going to keep an eye on this, make sure it doesn't leak. Because like I said, I don't know if I was able to get it inserted enough. It at least went in about two, two and a half, three, maybe three inches. But uh, usually when I put these in on a nice warm, nice warm, 80 or 90 degree day usually i can insert these almost all the way up to the you know the end and then i cut them off like that this about maybe went halfway in compared to usual uh, i'm also going to put this tire plug kit in it's pretty heavy duty stuff you know pretty heavy duty uh oh what do you want to call it sorry i'm so freaking cold remount tool you can also there's adjustable tools too in here if I had the Allen, oh, there's the Allen key. Take the Allen key, you can adjust the tips to, to the actual tool and everything like that. I'll put a link in the description too there for that. So that's it. Like I said, it's freaking cold out here and it's windy. I'm done, so. I just had to come out of the car. I'm gonna probably edit this in because I basically skipped right over actually putting air in the tire. So first of all, you're gonna wanna keep one of these on you. You should have one on you anyway. Just to, you know, check tire pressure, P-trip, pro-strip, whatnot. Here comes the wind again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna air this tire up. So I suggest, especially if you're an operator or even if you're a company driver, if you have the funds and you actually wanna maybe not have to wait for roadside service to show up and uh, you know, keep on trucking, keep on making money, try to keep the wind off of here, off of you here, uh, you're gonna wanna pick yourself up. Now what this does is it clamps to your glad hand on your emergency trailer line so you can air your tires up. It's pretty much, uh, I forget the name of it. There's the name. But it you know, clicks to your emergency line and whatnot. 
Uh, I suggest getting the rubber one. There's two different kinds. There's an orange one usually, and it's more plasticky. Uh, you can't, as you can see, I keep mine all nice and neat, but the plastic one, it just, especially in the cold air, it just goes everywhere. You can't roll it up. The rubber one, you can. What we're gonna do here, get the snow out of here. You just take it, and what you can do, you just put on your valve stem, and you rotate it. And I don't know if it's gonna stay because it's so cold. All right, you can rotate it and it'll stay on. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna hit the, uh, go in the truck, hit the emergency release for the brakes for the trailer. Man, my hands are freezing putting my hands down in the snow there. Let's try this again. All right, as you can see, you can step away. Don't forget about it. Check in a little bit, but you can just pretty much step away, keep you safe from the tire, maybe exploding. Probably want to get this off of there in case it does, because that way, you know, not, no projectiles or anything. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a little bit, check the air pressure, and hopefully it'll be good to go, and I can, uh, whew, look how red my hands are. I can quit getting frostbite here to make uh, some content right, for you. So we're gonna test the uh, pressure out now after about sitting in the car for five minutes and getting warmed up. Letting this air up. So we're uh, probably a hair under 100, which it would, with it being this cold out here and whatnot, that's fine by me. As you can see, can't hear nothing. Nothing comes out. Uh, I would go and get the uh, spray bottle there again, but you know what? It's too cold and I want to get the hell out of here and go have uh, lunch So with the family. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's edit this all together, guys, and you'll see, uh, you'll see me fixing this tire. Thanks for stopping by Jack Knife TV. My nose is dripping. Uh, if you like the content I'm putting out, you know, you like to uh, maybe watch me try to plug a tire in about like a negative 10 or 15 degree wind chill here, uh, you know, smash the like button. Uh, go over there and hammer down the subscribe button or vice versa, whatever one you feel like doing in that order. And uh, yeah, jackknife out.